Here is a classical smear of blood. It's called a peripheral smear. In a peripheral smear, the stain that is used is not H and E. It is called a Wright's stain, which is a slightly different type of stain, but nevertheless, nuclear material is more bluish, and cytoplasmic or non-nuclear material is more pinkish or reddish. There are several different types of cells classically uh, on a blood smear. The overwhelming most common type of cell are the small round red cells with a slightly more uh, lighter uh, cytoplasm centrally. They do not have nuclei. These are red blood cells. There's about five million of these per millimeter cubic uh, millimeter of your blood. The white cells are about only one thousandth uh, as common. They're only about five to let's say ten thousand per cubic millimeter. The white cells are five different kinds of cells. By far, the most common type of cell is a cell which has more than one lobe, which is why it's called a polymorphonuclear cell. They're also called polys. They're also called neutrophils. They're also called uh, neutrophilic granulocytes. And this is a classical neutrophil having more than one lobe. Uh, the red cells average about seven microns in diameter, but the more reliable measuring stick on a blood film is a small round lymphocyte containing a round nucleus and a minimal amount of cytoplasm. And the diameter of these are about 10 microns fairly reliably, which you can see is a little bit more than the seven microns of the average red cell. All of these little dots, which look like little flecks of material, are platelets. Sometimes they are between the red cells. Sometimes they overlie partly or fully the red cells. And there's about 150 to 400,000 platelets in the average uh, cubic millimeter of blood. At the tip of the arrow is a cell in which the granules are so dark, they obscure the uh, nucleus occasionally and these are called basophils and basophils are the least common type of uh, white blood cell and they contain these dark basophilic granules which contain histamine, heparin, and serotonin. Uh, you could see here is another neutrophil I'm sorry, here's another neutrophil, here's another lymphocyte. All the rest of these are red cells. All these little pink dots are platelets. And let's keep cruising around. Here's a platelet, here's a platelet. The rest of these are strictly red cells in this area. Here is perhaps a large platelet or a fragment of a cell. And the rule is never identify a cell if it is either smashed or smushed or uh, only has a nucleus. Otherwise, there's a good chance you'll be wrong. So there's always a good number of cells on a smear that are smashed or smushed for whatever reason, and you don't want to even try to guess what they are. Otherwise, once again, all you see are, are red cells and uh, platelets. And uh, let's go back, find a few more cells, and then we'll call it a day. Here is a granulocyte or a neutrophil. Here is another neutrophil. Here's a lymphocyte. And here's an interesting cell that has a somewhat of a convoluted nucleus, but it's not polylobed, and it has granules. This is a classical monocyte. This is the third most common type of cell, white cell, after the neutrophil and the lymphocyte. This is a monocyte. This is a neutrophil. This is a lymphocyte. And let's see, what else can we say? Perhaps we can find an eosinophil somewhere. I think somebody labeled one of those with an arrow. I think it might be this one. Eosinophils and basophils are generally not that common. Basophils are usually less than 1% and eosinophils are usually just a couple percent. 
So to find uh, these two cells, sometimes you have to look a little bit. We have the benefit of an arrow here. And this is a fairly classical eosinophil. Notice it only has two lobes. It never gets beyond the two lobe stage, whereas neutrophils often usually have more than two lobes. In fact, the average number of lobes per neutrophil is about 3.4. But the number of lobes in a neutrophil, in an eosinophil is only two. And you notice how the granules are a little bit redder and much larger. And that's how you uh, identify eosinophils. So I think we covered it all. We covered the red cells. We covered the platelets. We covered the neutrophils. We covered the eosinophils. We covered uh, the lymphocytes. I think we had a nice macrophage and a basophil as well. And once again, on the basis of the few things we looked at here uh, repeatedly, I don't think there is anything on this slide that you cannot identify if somebody asked you to identify. Thank you very much.